Welcome back, and our conversation continues with the state's Department of Education Commissioner, Frank Edelblue. During the break, we grabbed some of the latest questions surrounding COVID-19 and schools that you posted on our Facebook page. Uh, we do want to get right to those parent questions from Naomi in Bedford. She asks, very important question, will Internet access be offered to children who don't have it? So what we basically have is working with some of our cable vendors, particularly Comcast. They have provided a program called Essentials, um, and they are offering that free to children and family homes uh, that would qualify for that uh, through the, and they've actually offered for 50 days, and then we're working with them to see if they'll extend that through the end of the school year if it would be needed for that. But we've got the first 50 days so that it is possible for homes that don't have internet access to be able to connect up to uh, Comcast. Now we have some areas of the state that don't have Comcast service perhaps um, and those other parts of the state you know we're working with those providers in those areas to try and extend uh, that offer to them but there may be some households where the infrastructure is such that we can't get them good high-speed internet access that facilitates digitized and online learning and in those cases we really are going to be working on an analog type of a delivery method for their remote learning I see so case by case basis case by case basis by school district really all right and Lizzie Busby asks what about the community college system of New Hampshire. None of the schools have closed as of yet, but yet the state-run universities and colleges have canceled. So the state-run universities, actually you're, there's two systems, right? We've got the community college system of New Hampshire, and then we've got the university system of New Hampshire, and each of those has different policies that they have put in place in terms of supporting their students. Um, one of the things, one of the questions that comes up is really relative to many of my high school students are accessing classes at the community college through, um, you know, Running Start and dual enrollment programs. Um, and so we are working closely with the community college system to make sure that we can continue to offer those students those opportunities, even even in this remote instruction environment. And will community college classes go to remote learning? So some of them are going over to remote learning. They're on their break right now, so they're working through that process, and you'll see some more announcements coming out from them. All right. Akisha asks, how about private schools? We know the governor's order does not affect private schools, but have you heard how they are handling this? Yes, so many of the private schools, there's really kind of two categories in terms of how they're handling it. So we have some schools that are residential schools, um, and they tend to continue to operate because they really have a self-contained unit with those students who are residential there on the campus. So a very low risk environment, and they can continue their instructional practices, where what we have seen is many of the, uh, the private schools have adopted a practice that looks a lot like some of the, the way the, the public schools are doing it and switching to kind of remote instruction and remote support. Okay. And we do have a question from Kevin. He says, should kids be getting together to do projects if the point is social distancing? So what you'll find is while kids are getting together, what you have is limited numbers of cohorts in those students, right? So it's not 600 kids that are getting together, it's a few kids. Maybe it's five or six students that are getting together and working on a project. So certainly when you add one child, it's going to increase the risk, but those smaller numbers are safe for students to be able to work together. All right, and there's a question from Sarah now very quickly. We don't have a lot of time left, but will teachers be paid their regular salary with these school closures? So these are not school closures. These are transitions in terms of the instructional model. So teachers are working. They're engaged in the process of remote instruction and remote support, and we just appreciate their willingness to be flexible in this environment and continue to support their students. Absolutely, and parents can ask more questions directly to the Department of Education they on your can. website. If you go to education.nh.gov, we've set up a help desk there and you can fill out your question on a help ticket ticket we will route it to the appropriate person um, and then we'll be building a knowledge base of questions so you can look at the frequently asked questions and get information Frank Edelblue New Hampshire Department of Education Commissioner thank you so much for being here and answering those important questions from parents thank you for having me thank you